What is up everyone? Chris here, back with another video today. And this is going to be an overview of the Android O Beta 3 on the Google Pixel. And I've been using the Android O Beta for over the past month and a half, I wanna say, maybe about a week or two after it was actually released at Google I.O. Um, and this is gonna be my first impressions, kinda of going over any sort of bugs and as well as some of the features that you do get in Android O. So come on and stay tuned and enjoy. So some of the key features that uh, you will notice right away is the new notification shade and quick toggle settings. It has now gone from a dark gray to um, a very light white colored theme. And I I don't like it. I've not gotten accustomed to it. Um, the re one reason why is when it's at night, it's dark in your bedroom or wherever you may be, you get this huge bright shining notification shade when you pull it down. Even if you have it on the dimmest setting, it's still really bright and it's just very uh, obtrusive um, and in your face. And I've never liked it. I like dark themes, especially considering if you're able to make it completely black on this AMOLED panel, it saves battery. And I, just, I don't know why they went this route, but you may like that. Second is you're gonna notice these persistent notifications from the Android system um, of applications that are running in the background. These are non-dismissible applications, you cannot hide them. So even if we go into the settings for that application, we can see the, um, basically, Android system notifications. You're unable to uncheck any of these whatsoever. So these are always going to be there. You can, yes, make them um, snooze for an hour or 15 minutes, 30 minutes, what have you, but you're not able to get them away, they're non-swipeable. That's unfortunate, you can't hide them. So this really clogs up the notification shade when you get texts um, and other, other notifications you wanna interact with. Um, it, I wish you can make these go away. I wish they at least let you no notify you and then give you the option to turn them off. Um, if you know what you're doing, I think this is more so in the sense of just a security aspect to let you know, hey, this application is um, displaying something over your screen. It may be capturing information, but that's uh, number two as far as what you're notice. I'm not sure if that's a bug or they do that on purpose. Um, second is going to be these new little um, little anima animations for some of these little. Uh, icons here so you have the settings now moved to the bottom versus it being up here on the top um, and now you have your edit button and your profile picture down at the bottom here I don't like this because now it moves your uh, brightness slider at the very top and now it's not a little bit further down even like right in here that little bit makes a difference especially if you're trying to reach onto a larger phone up to the very very top just to change the brightness um, so there's another little uh, quirk there, unfortunately. Now if we dive into the settings itself, you're going to get a huge jumble of settings, not really organized, um, whereas before everything was in like network, it was in like a interface or accounts or something like that, but now it's kind of just one long list and then you have to go into some of these to find additional settings. So now we're in display, and under display there's usually like an option for like the double tap, screen on, screen off, lift to wake. Those used to be an entirely separate setting section on the Pixel, but now it's um, hidden within the display options, sorry, display options and advanced, and then you have to go into them. Um, just a couple extra taps, um, having to go into some of these extra um, options, so advanced again to go and show up some more um, features and settings. Again, not sure why they did this, it, it worked fine, um, but something they have done away with is the system UI tuner. So from 
beta 2 to beta 3. Beta 2 let you um, turn on and change and add um, additional navigation buttons. So this was actually set up when I was on the beta 2. Um, this is actually to change and to enable the picture in picture mode. Um, so if we play a video, for example, or not even, there is the YouTube app floating in the picture in picture mode. Um, whereas now, before, you go into settings, system UI tuner, you don't have that option to um, get those added. So unfortunately, I'm not sure if they just took that away um, and they may be re-adding it. Again, this is all beta. So they're going to add, take away, fix things. Um, so I, am luckily enough, was able to get that enabled before. Now to enable the system UI tuner, you're going to go down and you're going to press and hold this, your settings quick button there and press and hold on it and it'll give you the prompt to enable that and there you go. Um, a few bugs, um, we'll, we'll save the bugs, bear with me. Um, so now you do get uh, the basically the dots, notification dots. Um, so when you get a, a text message or any notification on a given app, it's going to show a, a dot similar to iOS, um, but it's going to be just a, a small, gray, non-intrusive dot. They're showing you that you have an app um, in that given um, application. This will also appear in your um, navigation tray of your applications. So that's that's good. It's not all, it's not just restricted to your home screen. So if we go and long press onto your app, you'll be able to um, again always have that um, long press additional action button. Um, and if there was a notification there, it would give you the option to click on that notification directly from the long press. So that is that is nice. Another addition they've added into beta three is long pressing on an app you're able to access uh, widgets directly from this long press, um, something that is much more um, accessible. You don't have to scroll through a long list of widgets here just to find the widget you want for your app. If you have an, a specific uh, widget that you want to get to for a given app, then you can access that quickly from the widgets uh, setting here. And again, you long press like you normally would on any widget. You do now still get Google uh, Assistant. Now, every device you have the typing feature, which that was something they announced on Google, at Google I.O. That is a nice addition. But overall, the stability for the Beta 3 on the Pixel has been fantastic. Um, I have not had any complaints. And there's been a few force closes here and there in the Google Play Store, um, the Google app itself. Um, battery life has been has been okay. Um, I would say it was about the same as I was when I was on Nougat. Um, can't really uh, complain too too much. But I one thing I have noticed though is I'm not sure if anyone else has recognized this. When you get a text message, now at least in beta 3, when you go to respond to it, it's going to show up as a new text message in your your texts. So I'm not sure if that's a, a an error, a bug with Google Messages or messaging. Um, when you get a notification of a new text in the notification shade, um, for the heads up, you click on reply, type in your message, and hit send without ever opening the app. When you go into the app, it'll then show the message you sent as a new text message, like as if you received it. Um, and then you, in order for you to get rid of that, you have to open it um, and then basically read the, the thread. Another thing I've noticed is that when I receive a text message and then respond um, in the heads up quick reply notification, I get a vibration when the message send, sends, as if I received a new notification. And now if I have multiple notifications of text messages, um, let's say I receive two separate text messages from two separate contacts, when I respond to one, I get two vibrations, one for one thread 
that I have yet to interact with and then another vibration for the other thread. Um, so again, that's more buggy and of course always submit any bugs, provide feedback and help Google kind of squash some of these bugs. Um, so that's pretty much it from I can tell everything under the hood has been improved. Um, they, um, the rebooting of, of the Pixel has actually been really quick. Um, installing updates again is seamless with the Pixel. Um, so you're able to download them in the background and even pause the download from while it's uh, working on installing. Um, and we are still unfortunately on the May security patch, but because these are betas, you're not gonna be getting the security patches as if you were on stable NuGet and getting monthly security patches. So there's that. Um, you do in the developer settings still have the sRGB color mode. You do also now have the ability to um, spe specify the Bluetooth um, codec you want to use, um, different codecs that you have available. Um, so if your device or your Bluetooth accessory supports a different codec that might be higher quality, um, that sort of thing, or um, more compression, more seamless, that sort of thing. You can specify those versus just using the default. Um, have not really noticed any difference in that regard. You still get, of course, your multi-window or split view, I should say. And that's all still there. So another thing that they've added or they've changed is they used to have a, spe a specific tab in the settings for support. Now it's just at the very bottom um, to click on for your phone or chat support. But as far as uh, improvements, everything more under the hood, some of these, for example, and they don't have that, it may not show up properly. Um, so this is going to be this is going to allow for e um, easier cross-platform um, use of the different emojis. Um, you're also going to be, I believe you're going to be able to implement um, emoji system wide. And also, since they're a little bit more round, I think they're kind of going the way of the iOS since uh, that it's more uh, recognized than some of the flat blobs. It took me quite a while and I'm still not quite adjusted to some of these. Um, the looks and I feel as if the, the emotions that some of these are portraying are not quite the same as what they were before with the little blobs. Um, so just that's to each their own. Um, hopefully they are going to change this whole light mode theme. And of course you can still add and change some of these toggles as well. If you guys are curious about this pixel color navbar down here, um, that is actually an app called Navbar Apps um, th that you do get when you purchase the full version of this. You can actually change the color of the navigation bar according to whichever app you're in. So you can do that on an app to app basis to help um, blend in, which has actually been really nice. You can have a static image um, which I have selected as the, the pixel. You do have like a community of shared navigations bars and there's the pixel one there. So something just to add there. And again, here is the a good working um, example of that dot notification, long press. And we can see there's a, a post on Facebook right there. So that's Facebook Lite. So you do get the some interaction. You can long press and access your notifications. So again, guys, this one is just uh, some overview of the Android O beta um, and want to give you my thoughts. Again, performance has been fantastic, very smooth and fluid considering this is beta. I would definitely say this is um, daily driver if you're okay with some of the, just the little small quirks here and there. Um, so yeah, that was just an overview. If you guys have any questions, comment down below. Um, and hopefully you guys are subscribed. That way you can see some of my future content. I do have some great plans in the works. Um, 
and I will see you all in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.